Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ritima Bhagli. I'm an ophthalmologist, that's an eye specialist uh, and I specialize in cataract and refractive surgery. So today I'm going to discuss the basics of refractive surgery with all of you. Um, coming to refractive surgery, what is it? It's a procedure wherein we correct the refractive error of the eye. So today's talk we're going to start with what is a refractive error? So a refractive error is an abnormality in focusing light in the eye. So an abnormality in forming an image on the retina of the eye. So I'm going to quickly start with a small diagram of your entire eyeball. This is the front, the cornea. There's a lens in your eye. And if rays of light enter the cornea and the lens and they focus on the retina, it's an ideal normal eye called an emetropic eye. If your eye is longer than a normal eye, the rays of light would focus in front of it. And then that eye is called a myopic eye. Myopia or short sightedness. That is the most common refractive error. Wherein the rays of light are focusing in front of the retina and a person needs a minus powered glass. So without glasses, a myopic person can see everything up close, but distance is a blur. The second kind of refractive error is when your eyeball is shorter than a normal eyeball. And in this case, the rays of light would fall and focus behind the eye. And that eye is called a hypermetropic eye or farsightedness. So these people can see distance clearly, but near is a problem. And there is a third kind of refractive error that does not depend on the length of the eye so much as the shape of the front of the eye. So the shape of the cornea, instead of being like a ball, if it is shaped like an egg or a baseball, that means it's steep in one meridian and flat in the opposite, it would lead to an astigmatic or a cylindrical refractive error. And that is the third kind of error. So these are the common errors, but how do we treat them? So in myopia, if we were to place a concave lens in front of the eye, the concave lens would diverge the rays of light such that they focus on the retina. And similar, the opposite, in a hypermetropic eye, if we were to place a convex lens in front of the eye, they would converge the rays such that they focus on the retina. So how do we place these lenses? Commonest is using spectacles. So when using spectacles, it's the safest, easiest, most convenient method to correct a refractive error and see clearly. The second one would be using contact lenses. Contact lenses are extremely thin lenses that you wear in the eye early in the morning and say 8 hours later by the end of the day you need to remove them. So contact lenses are a very good um, alternative for people who cosmetically don't want to wear glasses or it's a hindrance in their activities. If it's a sports person or someone um, who engages a lot in adventure activities then contact lenses are a good option. The third option which I'm going to discuss mainly is refractive surgery. If someone is not tolerant to contact lenses or they don't want to try them and they are keen to get rid of spectacles, refractive surgery is an extremely safe, simple alternative for uh, such kind of patients. So refractive surgery, we use a laser and we permanently shape, change the shape of the front layer of the eye that's called the cornea. So what is laser refractive surgery? We are using a laser beam. And we are going to change the shape of the cornea. Con commonly, we have been using eczema laser. That's the name of the laser that we use to burn the power on the cornea. If you have a minus refractive error, we are removing tissue from the center of the cornea to change its shape. So higher the amount of error, the more the tissue, the more the change, uh, shape change. Whereas if it's a plus refractive error, we are going to treat the, the side part, the peripheral part of your cornea to change the shape. Now, other than eczema laser, we also have a newer laser called femtosecond laser, which instead of burning the cornea, we are making bubbles and cleaving tissue planes of the cornea. And it's a more advanced form of laser that is used to correct your refractive error. So coming to how does the laser surgery work to change the shape? In minus errors or in myopia, we are flattening the center part. If your cornea is shaped like a dome, we are removing tissue from the center and flattening it much like it would act like a concave lens and then that would focus rays of light on your retina. Whereas for a plus refractive error, we are giving laser to the peripheral part of your cornea to, so as to steepen the center a little bit so that it would act as a convex lens and focus rays of light on your cornea. Similar, similarly, in an astigmatic refractive error, the steep 
deeper meridian is the one that would flatten to correct your refractive error. Coming to who is eligible, when can you consider getting laser refractive surgery? So you need to be at least 18 years of age, preferably 21 years of age, to consider undergoing this procedure. More importantly, your refractive error needs to be stable. That means that it should not have changed more than half a diameter in the last one year. Also important is getting your cornea thickness measured. So the cornea is the part that we are going to treat with laser. So we do a scan for your cornea to see that the shape and the thickness is suitable to get your refractive error corrected. If it matches, you can go ahead with the procedure. Other than that, we need to make sure that you don't have any systemic conditions or diseases like any autoimmune condition, uncontrolled diabetes, if you are pregnant or lactating, that would um, be a, an obstacle for us to proceed with surgery immediately. Also any eye related conditions, if you have glaucoma or any inflammation or uveitis or a cataract condition, we need to be cautious and wait before we consider a laser refractive procedure for your eye. More important than being an eligible candidate, I would say, um, your, your reasons for getting the surgery done, your motivation, your expectations from surgery are extremely important. So someone with realistic goals and expectations would be a perfect candidate for the procedure. So discuss in detail what you would expect and what you need from your surgery with your doctor before considering proceeding with the procedure. So what are the types of laser refractive procedures? The first and basic type of procedure is where this is your cornea, we are giving laser on the surface of your cornea and hence this procedure is called surface ablation. Advanced surface ablation is wherein we use advanced machines and medicines to make this procedure um, quicker, simple and with better results. So this was traditionally called PRK or photorefractive keratectomy. What do we do in this procedure? The surface layer of the cornea is scraped off and an eczema laser is used as we discussed to reshape the cornea. Once the laser treatment is completed, we place a bandage contact lens on the surface of the cornea to allow healing of your surface that would take about 3 to 4 days and after which the bandage contact lens would be removed. Um, so what are the advantages of PRK? It's an extremely safe procedure because we are keeping the rest of your cornea and the corneal thickness preserved better and the strength of your cornea preserved better. However, the only disadvantage that I can think of is over the years, this is one procedure wherein there is a small risk that the higher the power, the more the risk of the number coming back a little bit, which we call regression in medical terms. Also, your cornea may not remain crystal clear. There is a small risk that the cornea may become a little hazy, may not be clinically significant, but these are the disadvantages along with the slower recovery as compared to the other procedures. So the procedure other, the next procedure after PRK, the popular one is called LASIK. So LASIK stands for laser in situ keratomiliosis. So in LASIK what we are doing is instead of giving laser directly on the cornea, we are going to make a flap, the thickness of which would be about one fifth of the corneal thickness and after raising the flap, we are going to use the eczema laser beneath the flap on the cornea to correct the power and after the laser procedure is completed, we replace the flap immediately. There are no stitches in this procedure, it's a very quick procedure but the advantage is that there is absolutely immediate recovery. So the next day the patient is absolutely thrilled with their vision because there is no surface healing. The recovery is absolutely quick and it's a pain free procedure and there are two types of LASIK that are commonly performed. The way in which the flap is cut it is what makes the difference. If it is done with a blade kind of instrument, the machine is called a micro keratome. So what you commonly may have heard is blade LASIK. Wherein a machine is used to make the flap is the first kind of procedure and in the other kind of procedure it's a bladeless procedure. So a femtosecond laser which I had mentioned earlier is used to cut this flap. So there are two lasers used there. One the femtosecond laser to cut the flap and then another eczema laser to correct your power. So the bladeless LASIK procedure is absolutely precise, accurate and safe as compared to the blade procedure. The common concerns after LASIK may, may be uh, dryness for a couple of weeks or months and an initial phase of glare which will recover in a few weeks. So after LASIK, the third kind of procedure that I am going to mention today is called 
SMILE. This is the most advanced laser effective procedure. SMILE stands for small incision lenticule extraction. So this is the small incision as compared to LASIK where we are making a 20 millimeter cut. In SMILE we just have a 2 to 2.5 millimeter incision. And in this we are not using the Exima laser burning the power at all. The femtosecond laser that would have been used to make the flap in SMILE is used to cut out a thin lenticule in the center of your cornea. The thickness of which would depend on your power. And this lenticule is then extracted through this keyhole incision. So this is small incision lenticule extraction. And this is the most advanced technique because since the wound is absolutely minimal, the recovery is rapid. Three days and you can take a bath and resume your normal activities. You can let water enter your eyes. And because the cut is much smaller, there is no dryness after smile if we compare it with LASIK. Also, because we are not taking a flap, we are not opening up the eye, there are no flap related complications or risks with smile and we are not weakening the cornea as much as a flap would. So higher the power, I would recommend going for smile because it's going to preserve the strength of your cornea much better than the other procedures. Moving on, how do you prepare or plan for a laser procedure? If after listening to me, you have decided that you want to go ahead with the procedure. I would say first reason, first thing you need to do is define why you want to get it done. See your reasons. What is your motivation? What do you expect from the surgery? Do you want to get rid of your glasses for a particular reason? Do you, do you have reading glasses? Are you willing for that? After you have decided that you want to definitely go ahead with the procedure, I, I suggest you go to an ophthalmologist to get a detailed workup done. Before visiting your ophthalmologist, make sure you've discontinued your contact lenses for at least 3 to 5 days before getting your eye test done. So your ophthalmologist will check your vision, will get a corneal scan done, measure your corneal thickness, dilate you, get a good reading for your refraction, check your retina, make sure that you're all ready for the procedure and then once you plan which procedure you want to do, I suggest on the day of the procedure, turn up for surgery, relax, do not be stressed. Make sure you've slept well the previous night because you have to cooperate for the procedure. The procedure would only entail about 15 minutes of lying down and your doctor would instruct you in detail about which red light or green light to look at. All procedures are 100% painless. There are no injections, no bleeding, no pain, no stitches and no pads for any of the procedures. And usually we proceed with both eyes at the same time. After the procedure, you may have to take a rest for the day after the procedure. So we are going to come to that part a little bit later. So um, I think I've discussed about PRK in detail, wherein we are going to give laser on the surface of the cornea. But what if you are not eligible for any of these procedures? Maybe your refractive error is too high, it's minus 15. Or on your corneal scan, it turns out that the thickness is not good enough or the shape of the cornea is a little suspicious. So if you are not eligible for any of the corneal laser procedures that we discussed, do not worry because we have another safe procedure called faking intraocular lens that can definitely correct your refractive error and help you get rid of glasses. So what is a faking intraocular lens? It is commonly called an ICL. It's an extremely thin lens that is implanted into your eye behind the pupil, so behind the brown diaphragm in front of the natural lens of your eye. It's an extremely thin lens that does not touch any part of your eye. It floats in front of your natural lens. And it can correct any magnitude of spherical error, cylindrical error, may it be plus or minus. But what are the advantages? Are you I mean, concerned about getting an extra lens fitted in your eye? I think it's an absolutely safe procedure. It's a reversible procedure. Unlike a laser procedure wherein we're permanently changing the shape of your eye, an intraocular lens that is implanted in your eye is reversible potentially at least. That means it can be removed at any point of time. We are not making permanent changes in your eye. Also, there is no regression. That means there are not going to be any changes in your power as the, your wound heals over many years. Also, um, when your refractive error is high, getting a fake intraocular lens implanted is a much safer alternative because your nighttime glare halos will be much lesser than a fake intraocular lens as compared to a corneal laser procedure. So what is the technique and what are the tests that you would need to do? 
we need to run a couple of measurements for your eye to make sure that there is enough space to put the ICL in the eye. And once we calculate the size of the lens to be implanted, um, we order the lenses that would take about like a week or so. And then the procedure again is without an injection, without a patch. It takes just 5 to 10 minutes to implant this lens in your eye. And there is a definite wow factor. You can start seeing immediately. The day after, you're going to be absolutely fine. And the added advantage is there's no dryness at all. Just a little bit of care in the first week and you're set. Coming to the post-operative recovery and instructions after any laser procedure. I would say uh, give rest, take it easy for the first two to three days at least. Don't have anything planned because you might experience a little bit of irritation or watering for the first day after the laser. Um, keep gadget use minimum because your eyes will tell you what they are ready for. You would be advised to use some protective goggles as you step outdoors, maybe for the first week at least. And there would be a couple of eye drops, some antibiotic and steroid eye drops, probably for the first two weeks or so. And if you have dryness in the eyes, maybe for a month, some moisturizing and lubricating eye drops. Other than that, what would you expect in your recovery period? I think a common um, side effect would be glare. You might feel like all the lights are bright and a little bit blurry at night only for the first few weeks though and that would gradually reduce and disappear for sure without any further treatment required. Coming to the complications and risks for the future because this is the most um, uh, commonly asked question that people are concerned about. Other than the short term glare or dryness that I discussed, I think it's an, all laser procedures are absolutely safe with advanced machines and technology. The amount of tests that we run before selecting a patient for the procedure, we try and ensure that it's going to be absolutely safe for you. The higher the magnitude of error, we would request you to go in for better procedures so that the risk of the number coming back are minimized. Um, I would say laser procedures are safe. Just make sure that you're prepared with what to expect. You follow your doctor's instructions during the procedure, immediately after the procedure, and I don't think you would have any issue, absolutely. So thank you for your time, and it was a pleasure talking.